Welcome to the seventh annual Evelyn Gibbs talk. Uh, tonight hosted by uh, Pauline Lucas, uh, who wrote the biography of Evelyn Gibbs and also wrote about the rediscovery and restoration of the murals um, at St Martin's. And myself, uh, Mike Wakeley, I'm a consultant architect and I was involved in the restoration works, uh, writing the conservation management plan um, as part of the works. We were both part of the project team that was responsible for the extensive reordering at St Martin's, um, culminating in the Heritage Lottery funded project completed in 2014, um, which is part of the restoration of the two Evelyn Gibbs murals either side of the east window. Um, <clears throat> celebrations continued um, and continue still at the church, um, but in the summer of 2016, Nottingham Castle Museum held an exhibition based on the restoration of Sir Martin of Tours and its 20th century murals. The exhibition was titled Evelyn Gibbs in Peace and Wartime. Shall I describe the uh, introductory panel at the exhibition? Um, it included um, a large black and white uh, photograph that had been taken originally in 1946, just after the paintings were finished. And um, in the exhibition, the exhibition designer had incorporated into it a, a colour image of the restored window with the two murals on either side, making up the one story of the Annunciation. <clears throat> also, there was a text on that image so that people could understand the uh, whole uh, uh, idea of the restoration. The exhibition at Nottingham Castle had an introductory panel based on the black and white original 1946 photograph of the completed murals. And it also showed the text explaining what had happened to this church. And I'll read what the text said. Uh, the 14th century church of St Martin of Tours in Bilborough features a rare 20th century mural of the Annunciation by the artist Evelyn Gibbs, painted in 1946. As a consequence of drastic alterations undertaken in 1972, the mural was hidden and thought to have been destroyed. This remained the case until 2009, when a team of electricians working above the church's chancel exposed painted figures, generating great excitement amongst the community and hopes for a full restoration. With help from the Heritage Lottery Fund and Church Trust grants, it was finally possible to start work on the restoration project in early 2014. Conservation master builders worked with trainee apprentices from Bilborough to restore the ancient stonework, unblock and reglaze glaze the window, and install ground source underfloor heating. By September, Tobit Curtis Associates were able to begin the conservation and restoration of the mural. In late 2014, the entire project was completed and the vibrant paintings of the Virgin Mary and the Angel Gabriel set in Bilbra's village landscape could be seen again and celebrated at the Armistice Day service on November the 11th in the church in 2014. And lastly, uh, in 2015, St Martin's received the prestigious John Betjeman Award for this excellent conservation from the Society for the Preservation of Ancient Buildings. Okay. The story of St Martin's goes back nearly 700 years. When the first priest record is recorded and the construction of the chancel as it was is thought to have been completed in 1356. Subsequently, the nave, tower, south porch and vestry were added, we think, within about 100 years of the chancel being built. The Victorians, under the guidance of J. Newbury, a famous arts and crafts architect, in the, in, sorry, in the 1880s, carried out extensive um, reordering and alteration works at the church, which included forming the arch between the nave and the chancel, installing a new barrel vaulted ceiling over the chancel, 
and redoing a lot of the, the stonework and window tracery at the time. They removed the seating gallery and did extensive stonework repairs also. But it was not until the 1970s that the church's footprint as we know it today was completed with the addition of the worship space, art room, kitchen and other rooms with rather an uncompromising extension that knocked down the vestry and removed the whole north side of the chancel to join this rather Corbusian inspired extension to this medieval church. My involvement at St Martin's goes back to the late 2009 when I was working with the church architect Bruce Bradley who was appointed earlier that, that year by Hilary Wheat, the church warden at the time, and Mandy Cartwright, the vicar at the time. At the time, the medieval parts of the church were in rather poor state of repair. With the church on the buildings at risk register, Bruce was tasked with raising funds from English Heritage's Urgent Works Grant Scheme to start tackling the most pressing issues at the church. Phase one of the restoration, as it was called, included the repair of the tower roof, the parapet stones, redoing a lot of the plaster work internally in the nave and repointing the tower externally and its buttresses. The first time I visited St Martin's, I remember going up the tower scaffold to see the stonemasons removing a small tree growing out of the north, sorry, out of the south wall of the tower, and in the process of replacing several of the um, parapet stones which had become loose and displaced. I took this photograph nearing the completion of phase one, which shows the, the project team as it was then. Jim Garden, the stonemason, his son Luke, who did most of the building work together uh, with Bruce and Hilary. It was during this phase one, the restoration works, where a large amount of the lead work was stolen at the church. It had been taken off the roof and placed in the church for safekeeping. It was well over 100 years old and had graffiti marks um, from people who had been up the tower at um, various times in that 100 years. And it was stolen, unfortunately, during a break-in at the church. Thankfully, though, where we had one piece of bad luck, um, another couple of fortuitous events took place. The first being that an electrician went up into the barrel vaulted, um, well, into the ceiling of the chancel um, to look at some electrics. And when he was up there, as Pauline has said, he found um, this, which is a picture of um, Gabriel and the Annunciation murals either side of the east, the blocked up east window. Um, the other fateful a fortuitous event was Pauline actually got in contact with the church around the same time and she had written the autobi sorry, the biography of uh, Evelyn Gibbs and the two coming together along with um, some, some inspiration from English heritage Amanda White, um, a project started to grow and develop. I'll probably hand you over now to Pauline to tell you a little bit more about um, the start of the project. Oh, thank, thanks, Mike. Yes, yes. I, I reckoned it was about two thousand and nine that I became involved, and um, <clears throat> uh, because I'd been uh, taking some friends on a walk in Strelly, um, I I had um, come across um, Mandy, the vicar of the Bilba Church. She was vicar of both churches, and uh, I needed to borrow a key. Um, and I, I decided to give her a copy of the book I'd written on Evelyn Gibbs because in it I'd mentioned that there had been uh, a mural in the church of St Martin's at Bilborough but that sadly I had heard it had been destroyed. Um, I gave her the book and she must have passed it on to Hilary Wheat, the church churchwarden, um, so that when in 2009 the electricians discovered there were indeed paintings on the wall, visible, even if somewhat graffitied. Um, uh, that I was um, then contacted, and luckily I wasn't a million miles away, I was only living in Beeston, um, <clears throat> so I came over and met 
Hillary and Mandy and um, great things developed after that um, as Hillary used her great skills of um, publicity and fundraising to make the restoration a possibility. Um, the first slide I'm showing, is this yeah, one? Yeah, I'm going to show you some slides. <clears throat> Um, the first slide I'm showing is of the 1946 black and white photograph that was taken in the church when Evelyn Gibbs had finished painting the murals. And um, this has proved actually a very useful image for the restoration that was to happen later. Um, next one. Um, in this photograph, uh, which was from the uh, Nottingham Guardian Journal in Nottingham, um, <clears throat> taken in 1946. Evelyn Gibbs is shown with another artist called Claude Price um, working on the um, working on a sort of wooden scaffolding uh, in order to complete the paintings on the wall. Um, <clears throat> it, uh, you may say how did this come about? Uh, it came about because the artist Evelyn Gibbs originally from Liverpool had been evacuated from London with her students from Goldsmiths College at the outbreak of war. A most enterprising woman, she had been commissioned by government to work as a war artist, recording women's work in factories and elsewhere. She had also, in 1943, set up a group of Midland artists to offer their skills to enliven public spaces in those drab times. They sent out leaflets to offer exhibitions. Next one, please. <clears throat> the leaflets um, set out the skills that they had on offer, paintings, drawings, exhibitions, and wall paintings. Um, these leaflets were sent around, and one of the recipients of the leaflet was the rector at St Martin's Church, Father Marshall. And he was interested in uh, requesting a painting for his church and he asked that a, a painting of a mural of the Annunciation should be um, the, the subject and he chose the design presented by Evelyn Gibbs and um, next one. Oh, that's the back of the same one carry on um, uh, <clears throat> I've been very lucky in um, having from um, Evelyn Gibbs' own archive these black and white photographs that were taken at the time in 1946. So this one shows the Virgin Mary set against the village landscape of Bilborough. The next one is of uh, the angel Gabriel set against the church itself, St Martin's, since of course he was the messenger from God to announce to the Virgin Mary that she would be the mother of the Son of God. Um, <clears throat> these photographs became very useful during the renovation and restoration as the artists involved in repainting the lower halves of the uh, murals needed to see uh, only, if only black and white, but versions of the original paintings. Um, anyway, I uh, diverse from what I Plan to say. Um, <clears throat> um, uh, the style of the paintings was a contemporary version of the traditional religious Renaissance frescoes studied by Gibbs in Italy in her 20s. Um, there is a Fra Angelico um, uh, Annunciation that's here, and oh, the next one is uh, an Annunciation by Carlo Crivelli. And both of these, painted in the Renaissance, used um, this um, interesting way of making the story of the Annunciation relevant to the day and the time and the locality in which uh, they were painted. So that when Evelyn Gibbs painted her figures, which were, by the way, life-size, very, li very large figures, um, they were set against the, the local landscape of Bilborough. Um, next one. Um, moving ahead um, to the restoration itself, um, during uh, the building work for in the church that Mike has, has been uh, 
<coughs> responsible about and perhaps would like to talk at this point? Yes, certainly. Um, the Heritage Lottery uh, required a two-stage um, project. So the first stage was the de development stage, which involved taking a core sample out of the nave floor, um, doing a little bit of opening up works on the east window um, to see what the tracery, what condition the tracery was in and the murals, but mainly to do um, sort of paint analysis to see whether it was possible to take there was emulsion paint over the bottom half of the murals and to see whether it was possible to take that paint off. Um, so that development stage is the f was the first stage that Heritage Lottery required and the second stage um, following on from that was the capital works phase which costed around £380,000 worth of work at the church. Um, it included removing the 1970s flat ceiling that went across uh, the murals and across the chancel, that got removed. Um, it reinstated the east window because the east window was essentially bricked up um, so new glazing was put into that and all the brickwork taken out. Um, the, the church had a concrete floor throughout all of the nave and the chancel um, and this was dug up because it was forcing water into the walls. It was impermeable and water was getting drawn into the uh, walls and causing the plaster work to fail. So a lot, of the, um, a lot of the plaster work was redone and a new floor that was breathable was put down. Um, basically um, compacted um, like pumice sort of material was compacted and then on top of that a stone sort of finish um, was put on the flooring. So it removed this problematic concrete floor, um, put down the new breathable construction, levelled the floor so that it was had better access for people in wheelchairs. Um, there was also installed under, under, under floor heating. Um, there was three piles um, driven into the ground um, where uh, basically a pipe goes down and comes back up warmer, filled, filled with water, a mixture of water and oil. It then goes through a heat pump and that was used for the heating in the church, which is quite a, a forward-thinking, sustainable um, way of heating the church and that was put in. Um, the south porch was um, refurbished, that also has underfloor heating, it was glazed and a new um, door put on it. Um, a lot of the windows um, had been um, damaged, so there were some window repairs. There was also grills put on the windows, um, powder-coated um, frames that went to protect the stained glass on the outside. And a lot of repointing work was done um, in terms of taking out, as well as taking out old stones um, that had been wind damaged and eroded, um, the whole of the south side of the chancel and the, the nave were repointed and the east end as well with a new window in the east window. Um, so the stone repairs, the grills, um, but in addition to that the HLF also funded um, a series of activities and heritage related events at the church. So during the um, the capital works. There was hard hat tours so people could come and see the work being done at the church. Um, there was an activities coordinator, Natasha Scullion. She was appointed and worked with Hillary um, to set up various groups. So there's the Crafty Ladies group um, who made all the pew cushions and um, continued to do good work um, for fundraising events at the church. There's the gardening group, um, the local history group, the Friday Writers Group, and also founded was the Friends of St Martin's at the same time. Um, do you want to say any more? Yes, because that those were <coughs> developments much later, weren't they? Yes. And of course, the Heritage Lottery um, <coughs> Fund uh, did make these demands on us that we should um, continue to uh, bring in the community and provide uh, many activities that would relate to the um, <coughs> the improved um, 
building and the uh, vision of the um, murals that had been restored so that it was very much following their advice and and an excellent advice it was too I think yes yeah there was also um, uh, sort of interpretation tablet tours mm -hmm. um, these pop-up displays and banners um, church events pew covering workshops school visits church fairs calendar recording of the works um, an in-house artist uh, recorded through paintings various stages of the works and an exhibition um, restored the murals the restoration of the murals at, at the castle and local libraries one of the successes of the project was the use of young volunteers from the local area um, so they were used um, and several of them went on for employment, one of which with the stone contractor. They were employed as um, by the stone contractor. The project was um, recognised nationally, as Pauline has said, for the SPAB, Sir John Bateman Award, and it was also narrowly missed out on a Heritage Angel Award 2015, um, coming second in the Places of Worship category. Shall I uh, take come back to the situation that we see on the, the slide at the moment. Yep. <clears throat> um, back uh, soon after the uh, original discovery that the murals were still visible <clears throat> um, and uh, it, the, there was an urgency then to uh, create funding uh, in order to uh, hopefully restore the murals and the church. Um, this photograph here um, shows, I think, probably Hilary Wheat is there, the church warden, and Phil Turton, the builder, and someone else I can't recognise. Um, uh, you can see from this view that um, the, the chancel ceiling had been completely hidden, along with the window, which, as you see, is bricked in, and the mu murals on either side of that window um, getting dirtier and uh, you know more exposed all the time uh, they were hidden by this pine ceiling you can see and in order to reach it um, anyone intrepid enough had to climb through a trap door I can remember how scared I was to do that um, <clears throat> um, I did eventually um, uh, just to get a view of the murals um, I have to say that I I began researching into the life of Evelyn Gibbs really quite a long time ago, back in the 90s. Um, uh, I, I'm an artist myself and I was interested in um, this artist I'd heard of called Evelyn Gibbs, who had founded a, an important art group in Nottingham called the Midland Group of Artists. Um, and I myself actually joined it um, whilst it was still uh, in existence. Um, it held exhibitions and so on and occasionally I believe Evelyn Gibbs herself would come to Nottingham to visit these exhibitions but I imagine she knew nothing about what had happened to these murals of hers um, didn't know that they'd been hidden from view by this uh, rather strange um, uh, modernization in this ancient church um, but here we are looking at um, <coughs> The, uh, the, the view that could only be seen, of course, by strong lighting um, of the remains of the murals. And from there on, um, it became possible for Hilary Wheat to organise publicity and um, funding so that this incredible feat could be achieved of, of rebuilding parts of the church and restoring back to life the the murals that have been hidden so long in this image um, we can see that um, the the uh, pine ceiling has been removed and scaffolding is put up so that two of the restoring team can work on the upper sections of the murals remember that the lower sections um, could not be seen because they'd been covered in two coats of emulsion so in this uh, photograph, it could either be Bianca or Claudia. Two, the, the women who worked on the um, uh, Annunciation um, 
paintings who, who worked on restoring them uh, were Bianca and Claudia and another couple, a mother and daughter team called Joy and Saskia, whom you'll see in, a, in a, another photograph. Uh, here is uh, Joy, the mother, on the right and Saskia with the red hair on the left. And um, they had the extraordinary job of re uh, of painting, repainting the rest of those figures below the top half that you can see. And they, they used the black and white photographs that I'd been able to provide for them from Evelyn Gibbs' own archive. Uh, and they also had the colouring they could see from the uh, murals above for the correct um, paint colours that they would use. This was done incredibly well and beautifully so that nobody would know there had been uh, a repainting of the lower half. Next one please. Uh, this is a view simply uh, along the nave of a church to the far end, um, a, a view that hadn't been possible for years because the, um, the uh, nave had been blocked off by a, a large curtain and the, um, the chancel had been hidden by this full ceiling so that no no indication at all was there of the murals that had once been there and uh, um, here is um, uh, I think it's Claudia I, I was there in the church quite a lot um, and I think this is Claudia and the work they had to do was extremely careful and fine in very carefully cleaning um, cleaning areas of dirt and in a few cases uh, slightly adjusting a surface which had flaked off um, but it was these are, are fine expert conservators and uh, their work was incredibly uh, well done and the next slide is of Claudia um, <clears throat> and she is working on the angel Gabriel and before this photograph she had to remove the graffiti um, that surrounded his head um, where builders had uh, used pencil, I believe, but I hope it wasn't biro, to, to draw, draw glasses and a beard onto the angel Gabriel. But this was successfully removed and gently um, restored in, in ways that only conservators know how. A brilliant restoration. Uh, next one, please. Um, and of course, here is the uh, result of this wonderful work. Um, the entire window, uh, luckily, it still had the, the stone tracery um, and the um, expert glazier, a uh, Mike, I can't remember his name, um, uh, prepared um, <clears throat> a very simple scheme of, um, of uh, clear glass with some colouring in the upper sections where the patterning um, suggests different shapes and it, it gave a very clear and gentle light uh, and was absolutely perfect for the um, murals on either side and that was the successful um, <clears throat> uh, culmination of all the work in the uh, of conservation. Um, I don't know whether I should go on now to talk any more about Evelyn Gibbs. By all means. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> um, well, the next slide will be, will be, what I think Evelyn that? Gibbs, yes. Evelyn Gibbs, um, before she came to Nottingham, um, was uh, a lecturer at Goldsmiths College uh, in London. Um, and this photograph I, I came across amongst Evelyn Gibbs' um, own photographs in her archive. Uh, Evelyn Gibbs is in the central position there with the uh, dark hair parted in the middle, um, sitting cross-legged on the steps um, with other members of staff. Um, it will be in the 1930s um, before she came to Nottingham. Um, she'd been appointed to teach in Goldsmiths because she had um, uh, become uh, an expert in child art education because she wrote um, a book that became famous at the time which is on the next slide um, the teaching of art in schools uh, which 
was reprinted for many years. Um, so this edition and this cover came in the 1950s, I believe. It was first printed though in 1934. Um, so that's some of her background. And um, she, she continued as, a, as an artist and a teacher. She, um, carry on. Um, uh, this is a, 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 a wartime um, page from a newspaper in Nottingham, just to remind you that she was working uh, in Nottingham in the wartime. And she was a practicing war artist. She'd been appointed to make uh, drawings and paintings during the war that the government required to show the work of women during the war. <clears throat> this one is of the blood, blood transfusion unit, which it's possible was um, in the university at the time, Nottingham University. Uh, next one is another blood transfusion drawing. Both of those are in the Imperial War Museum in London. <clears throat> and, and here is a drawing that she was asked to do in Nottingham in the uh, Raleigh's Bicycle Factory, which had been turned over to wartime work. So they were making um, munitions of some kind. And these women um, were, you know, had to cover their heads so they didn't get, I don't know, grease and, and um, dangerous substances, I'm sure, whilst they were working. Um, she made many drawings in the Raleigh factories and some of them are now in the possession of Nottingham Castle, but I don't have the images for you. Um, in order to go and draw in the factory, she, it, was, it was wartime, remember, she had to have a permit. And this photograph shows the permit um, to allow her to go into the um, factory in wartime. And uh, written in green ink. <laughs> yes, thanks. Um, she was also um, asked to make a painting of the WVS activities in Leicester, um, the Women's Voluntary Service, that is. Um, and uh, so she, she made this painting of an occasion where mothers and children were um, offering each other spare clothes during the wartime, um, a sort of um, swap shop. Uh, not exactly a charity shop because I believe they were giving them away. Um, so she made this painting and uh, it also is in the Imperial War Museum and it's called the, the, the not, not terribly um, uh, beautiful title, the WVS Clothing Store. And <clears throat> there is a, um, a photograph I found, thanks, um, of Evelyn Gibbs sketching in Leicester um, a little boy or girl um, who has um, uh, been offered some clothing at this occasion. So during the time that Evelyn Gibbs was in Nottingham, because she didn't live all her life here, um, she was often um, uh, reported on in the local press. Um, uh, you know, she, she, she received a lot of publicity, in, in other words, and I was lucky to be able to um, <clears throat> make use of these when I, I wrote about her. Um, next slide. Um, ah, I wasn't going to bother with these, but this is the famous Laura Knight uh, from Nottingham, um, a, a war painting she did um, that was um, commissioned by the government um, <clears throat> of a, a woman working in industry. But I'll bypass these. Um, but you may, may not want me to go any further. Um, maybe um, Mike wants to come in now. <clears throat> okay, I've only got a little bit more to tell you about, really. Okay. Um, I was just going to mention some of the people who've worked uh, on the project. Mm. Um, I think we've mentioned before Hilary Reed, Church Warden, um, but the project team was made up with Mandy Cartwright, who was the church vicar, Pauline, who was our Evelyn Gibbs expert, Simon Gledhill, who was the church funds manager, uh, Kevin Tate, uh, quantity surveyor, um, Bruce Bradley, project architect, uh, myself, um, consultant architect, uh, Woodheads were the contractors, uh, Chris Hay was their project manager, but their site manager um, was Phil Turton. 
but there was also other consultants who were involved in the project. There was Tobit Curtis, who were the painting conservators, Saskia Hunning, as we mentioned, um, restoration painter, um, Benedict Cabri, uh, lighting designer, uh, who's responsible for doing the lighting scheme within the church, Ashley Olsop, who was the building services consultant, who was responsible for um, designing the heat pump and that side of the sustainable heating, and Robert Demaeus, who was a, a timber um, specialist, um, who took um, miniature samples of the um, the woodwork on the barrel vaulted ceiling, and he was involved mm -hmm. to tell us, um, you know, what age that ceiling was and what we needed to do to conserve it. So that that was all I had really to share was just the collaboration that it was really, lots of different specialities um, mm. specialists coming together on one project. It was an extraordinary project and very exciting to be involved in it too. Okay, that probably wraps up what we've um, given you an insight into and hopefully we'll be doing the 8th annual Evelyn Gibbs talk next year. <laughs> Take care. And our thanks to Peter. For doing the, um, the filming of this for us. Thank you, Peter. <laughs>